Hello, my name is Brittany Israel, and I'm the Guide Dog Program Manager at the Guide Dog Foundation and America's Vet Dogs. This webinar is entitled Dog Introductions, Life with a Guide Dog and Pet Dog. The purpose of this webinar is to show you different ways of how to and how not to introduce your new guide dog to any pet dogs that you have living in your home or any future pet dogs you might get. If you do have any questions regarding your guide dog or their interactions with any pet dogs, please contact our consumer service office and one of our staff members will be in contact with you. First, we're gonna start off with the improper greeting techniques. This is what not to do. Please note in this video that the humans have a higher energy level when they're greeting and their, that energy level then transfers down to the dogs and causes a little conflict. So again, that higher energy level and the lack of control on the dogs does cause a little outburst to occur. Now, let's check out the proper greeting techniques, the right way to do it. Please note in this video that the two trainers have their dogs in a sitting position. They're nice and calm and relaxed, and they're going to have a nice controlled greeting with both dogs. If at all in this case, the two dogs do get a little bit rowdy, all you, the trainers need to do is walk away and just separate the dogs. So here the dogs are nice and calm. They're getting permission to go interact with each other. And we have a whole nother scenario where the dogs are friendly and happy with greeting one another. There's other ways to introduce two dogs together in order to get them to become acclimated and in a sense, become friends. So for example, having the two new dogs walk side by side. So after you do this initial greeting, go for a walk together. This is a great technique which allows both dogs to be in this slide, you are gonna see the two dogs work walking together, just on leash. No harness is on the guide dog, which in this video is the golden retriever, and definitely not the other dog. <laughs> um, and you'll note that the dogs are nice and relaxed on their walking, they're nice and controlled, and they're becoming friends. Yeah, the trainers are keeping those dogs nice and relaxed and controlled. And that is an important thing to do, just keeping the environment nice and calm. Other things do occur when you're inside the homes. When you're inside the home, it's very important to make sure that the dogs have separate places. So having a separate bed to sleep in, separate feeding areas, separate places in the room where you're gonna be congregating. And it's okay to have two different places, one in the bedroom and then one in the living room or living area where the dog can certainly remain part of all the action. It is also imperative to keep your current dog's sleeping area where it is and not to change everything around too much and put the new dog where your current dog is because that can also resolve with some conflicts. So here's a little uh, sample of how we have the two humans the guide dog is gonna be that golden retriever on the left, just hanging out, chewing a bone. The pet dog is gonna be on the right and everybody's just hanging in their two separate areas. Uh, we have two separate beds for each dog and the dogs have their own places where they can call their own. And everybody's just hanging out and having fun. It's also very important to make sure that you do have separate feeding places too. Again, it's great to keep the feeding places on their, their places uh, where it could be maybe a crate, it could be a bed on tie down, just making sure the two dogs will stay separate during that feeding time. We have the two dogs having their separate feeding areas. The pet dog on the right is eating its dinner while the golden retriever guide dog on the left is waiting for its dish of food to be placed on the floor prior to him eating. Living with both dogs. I don't know if any of you guys have had multiple dogs in the household, but it can be a little entertaining together. 
The best thing to do with the guide dog is to keep the guide dog under control. It is okay to have the guide dog having separate rules from the pet dog. Here's a video sample. In this video, you will see that the guide dog is on leash, he's under control, and the pet dog is sitting loosely on the couch. The pet dog you know, can go over, interact a little bit with the guide dog, but if the guide dog gets a little disrupted, they get up, the pets and the, the guide dog start playing a little bit, get a little rough housing, then it's best to separate them. You can always keep that pet dog on a leash with you too for the first couple weeks to ensure that both the pet dog and guide dog get acclimated and they understand the rules of the household. And the guide dog's getting some food reward for being such a good buddy. Another thing that we get questions on is how to take a walk with the guide dog and pet dog. A lot of people would like to take the dogs for walks together. There are ways to do this and ways not to do this. The most important thing is to make sure that the guide dog does not get distracted by the pet dog. The way to do this is to have the guide dog walk out in front and have somebody with the pet dog trailing behind, keeping the pet dog away from the guide dog at a safe distance to not interfere with the guide dog's work. Here the pet dog is staying further back, probably about eight to 10 feet back to avoid the guide dog turning around and looking at it. You will know that the guide dog is getting distracted if the guide dog is turning around to look at the pet while it is working. So that's the way to do it. Other thing too is the handler of the pet dog is making sure that she's staying further back, especially on the street crossings, allowing the team to stop at curbs, to cross the street safely, and to do their work together. That is very imperative. We wanna also make sure that the guide dog does not get distracted on that pet dog following behind. If you need further advice on this, please certainly contact our consumer service office. Playtime is always a fun time for every dog. We wanna make sure that your pet dog and guide dog can get along together inside the house. Playtime is very important. With playtime, we wanna make sure it is controlled and that it's not going to get out of hand. So when you do originally have your playtime, keep the dogs nice and relaxed, make sure they're in a calm demeanor, and then you can give them permission to play. Again, note the trainer's having a calm tone when they release the dogs to go play. Here the dogs are just relaxing, they're nice and calm. They're interacting very nicely together. When dogs play, they might chase each other around. They might vocalize a little bit and they might kind of grab at one another's necks and around uh, their throats. It's nothing that is aggressive. If the dogs are starting to get a little bit unruly, then you can pull them apart. In the initial beginning, when you are having two dogs initially meet to play, you can certainly start them out on a long line. Uh, that's gonna help give you a little bit more control. Once the dogs do get their playfulness out, you can certainly have the dogs come back to you just as we do when we free run our dogs. Keep everything nice and calm and you'll have some great play time together. Again, if you follow these advice, you will be able to have a very safe and happy working team and have your pet, uh, pet dog be wonderfully behaved along with your guide dog. If you do have any further questions or would like any additional information, please contact our consumer service office at any time 
and we will be glad to assist you. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Lauren Berglund. I'm the Consumer Relations Coordinator at the Guide Dog Foundation and America's Vet Dogs. As part of this webinar series, we are presenting to you an interview with two of our program graduates. They're going to tell us their stories and experiences relating to integrating a pet dog into their life with a guide dog. Hi everyone, today I'm here with two of our foundation graduates to tell you a little bit about their experiences as guide dog handlers and pet owners and how those two instances have kind of came together in their lives. So we're going to start with just some basic introductions. So Richard, if you want to tell me about yourself, where you live, do you live with anyone else, if you work, all those types of things. Okay. My name is Rich uh, Jacobson. I live in New York City um, and I live with my, my spouse and my daughter. Um, we live in Manhattan, so it's a very busy place to have a guide dog, but a great place to live. Certainly. Do you want to tell us about your guide dog? Sure. Uh, my guide dog's name is Clyde. We've been a team for a year and a, about a month. Um, and, uh, the, the big deal for me was introducing her to our pet dog who, um, it has been with us for now six years, um, and letting her adjust. Wonderful. Um, do you want to tell us anything about your pet dog? Is it a small dog, a big dog? Oh, she is a schnoodle. So she is about 13 or 14 pounds. Um, and she bosses Clyde around all the time. Awesome. And is Clyde your first guide dog? Yeah, uh, Clyde is my first guide dog. Wonderful. Holly, do you want to tell us about yourself, where you live, what you do, if you live with any family, all those types of things? Okay. My name is Holly and I live in Iowa and I have, I live with my husband. I have four children and one is in college. And now I have Mr. Rolo, who's my guide dog that I just received in March. Mm -hmm. And at the time I had a pet named Edgar, who was a lab Great Dane mix. And we'd awesome. adopted him in September. So about a month before my first guide dog passed away. Mm -hmm. So he and my first guide dogs were buddies and I'd had him so from September until March then when we brought Mr. Rolla home. Okay. Um, do you want to, Richard, tell us about how the initial introduction went with, with your dogs? Um, sure. I actually had a really good situation with it where the dogs were able to meet outside of the house because I live in Manhattan and the program does a training in Manhattan one day. Um, I was, and we had a little extra time. I was actually able to get my daughter to jump on the train with our pet dog, whose name is Lucy. Um, and she um, came down and we met up at Lincoln Center and the two dogs got a chance to meet. Um, and it was neutral territory. So they got to spend, I'd say about an hour together. Um, so, it made it a lot easier. We all, I also did um, dog rescue. My spouse and I did dog rescue for about six years um, when we lived in upstate New York um, and we did a lot of fostering. So we were very used to the idea of bringing multiple dogs together in, into a household um, and how to deal with some of the issues. Um, and our introduction went really smoothly. Um, that's about it. Thank you. Holly, how about your initial introduction? Yours was a little different because it was once you and Rolo got home. Yes. So we had been gone obviously for two weeks. So my husband and the kids came to the airport to pick me up so that the kids could meet Rolo. And then when we got home, the kids stayed we have um, an acreage, so we have a few acres. And so the kids were outside with Rolo on his long leash and I went inside to greet Edgar because it had been two weeks mm -hmm. and I do stay at home. So Edgar's used to being at home with me 
all day long. So it was kind of a shock when I'd left. So I came in first to greet him and get some plays out where the kids were out playing with Rolo since he'd been on the airplane. And then we leashed up Edgar and I brought Edgar out to meet Rolo out in the yard on their leashes. And they sniffed each other and did a little bit of playing where they kind of romped around and sniffed each other. And um, then we brought them in the house and I had been told to try and keep them both on their leashes while they were in the house, while they were meeting each other for the first week or to have um, them in separate rooms for the first week until we knew how well they were going to get along. And so we did that and we ended up having to get Edgar a um, harness that had a handle on it because he would um, try and dart underneath Rolo because he was only a 50 pound dog. So he was 20 pounds lighter than Rolo and he would try and dart under Rolo. Mm -hmm. And then the two of them were both pretty dominant. So they were trying to mount each other a lot. And then it got to the point where they were growling and snarling while they were mounting each other. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where Edgar was trying to get at Rolo while we were taking him out to go to the bathroom and trying to um, get off of his leash and can't think of the right word. He was like pouncing at him or trying to strain to get to Rolo whenever they were in the same room. Yeah. And I think Rolo finally got so stressed. This had been about a week and Rolo had finally gotten very stressed and at one point went potty in the house, mm -hmm. which was a big, alert to me that he was becoming extremely stressed. So we brought Edgar to my son's house in college to see if my son could have Edgar while I had Rolo. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately that didn't work out either. Edgar kind of had some body issues and wouldn't go to the bathroom at my son. And so that was kind of when we had a contract with the rescue agency that we needed to return Edgar since, um, we had to make the decision between Rolo and Edgar and Rolo was my freedom and was obviously what something that I needed. And although we loved Edgar desperately and it was an extremely emotional time, he did end up finding another family almost immediately and has fit in and settled well and done well with his new family as a single solo dog. It's definitely never an easy experience, but it is something that comes up for some of our graduates once they get home because it is, you know, hard to say when some dogs might get along and other dogs just might not. Um, and so you had to make that difficult choice. And we do thank you a lot for sharing that experience as we know it's not an easy one to have to have. Um, Richard, if you could tell us about kind of integrating both dogs into your home, maybe some of the steps you take took to help them adjust or kind of what you do now on your day-to-day -day basis with both of them? Um, okay, so when I got home uh, from GDF, I the first thing that we did um, was to have both dogs outside um, and then we were able to let them, you know, see each other again. Then we brought Clyde up uh, into our apartment and when she had, you know, had a chance to check out every room, uh, we, ha we had Lucy, our, our little dog, come up. Um, we kept them on leash for about, I'd say, 20 minutes um, and kept them separated but in the same room. Um, and then took them off leash because they neither one was having dog reactive issues. We wanted to see how it would go. And they immediately started to, you know, sniff each other. And within a minute they were playing together. Um, and, you know, it was, since then it's been, you know, reasonably good. The, the funny part is that they'll wrestle together and we're lucky that Clyde um, is very gentle and, you know, is able to play with her. They wrestle all the time. It was a pretty easy in introduction. We've had harder introductions with other dogs um, when, we, when we were doing uh, fostering. This one, though, was reasonably easy. Um, 
and the you know the we were it went so well we actually created an instagram for them um and it's called frog and goose in the city clyde is frog lucy is goose um and it you know if you ever want to see pictures or videos we've got a ton up there i have to say um that my wife does most of it but um we were always trying to add stuff and you know just try to help people understand more about guide dogs and it was it just worked out for the two dogs they seem to absolutely love each other um and that was that was their introduction story and a little bit about our instagram so now on a day-to-day -day basis i'm do they eat in separate places sleep in separate places kind of how does that work um so they eat our, our, we live in Manhattan, so the apartment's not really that big. <laughs> Having them eat in separate places, we tried that. Um, they actually eat, eat in our hallway um, and are about 10 feet apart mm -hmm. with their bowls. Um, they do actually share their water bowl because um, given the way our hallway is set up, if we had two bowls out there, we found I was tripping over one of them all the time. Um, cause Lucy drinks throughout the day. They're basically loose in the apartment. Um, and they sleep either next to each other, um, or one will actually rest their head and use the other as a pillow. Um, so they, they sleep in the same space, um, without issue. Certainly. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience introducing my retired guide dog to my working guide dog because that can be a little bit different of a dynamic just because the dogs it's a little interesting for them there's a new person in their old place or well, a new dog um so we did something similar where my current active guide was at my apartment and my parents brought my retired dog up i went outside and met my retired dog had a nice little catch-up session and then we brought out my working guide dog. So since my retired dog had been to my apartment before, they were all kind of just mutual places. We let them both come in and I kept them on leash for a little bit just so no one got too excited. And then they got to kind of each have a toy, lay around for a little bit, and then we let them off their leashes. These two still just get a little bit too rambunctious inside. So every so often they do still have to just be on leashes with each other because they just want to play. Um, but they share their toys and they each have separate beds and separate bowls when I'm with my retired dog. She doesn't live with me full time. Um, she lives back home. And then with feeding times, I, they do eat about four feet from each other, but I have to watch because whoever finishes first wants to go steal the other's rest of their food. So it has worked well. Um, as far as, you know, restrictions and that kind of stuff, there are some behaviors that the retired guy gets to kind of get away with where she can kind of sit up at the dinner table and kind of stare down people, where my working guide dog has to, you know, ignore everything and stay in her downstay. So those are just a few little things. Um, playtime, they, in the beginning, the retired dog was not too excited about the new dog. She was just a little bit too much. Um, but now my retired dog is definitely the instigator of all things play. So it can take some time for them to adjust and kind of figure things out. Um, I did, I was a little worried the first time I picked up the harness with both dogs, what would happen? And actually my retired dog didn't even really blink an eye. She just went to her kennel like, mm, time for a nap because she knew that's the drill when we leave. Um, but they do pretty well together and it's, it was a smoother transition than I expected. Holly, do you have anything additional you'd like to share? Um, I also had a pet with my previous guide dog mm -hmm. and they also, um, got along wonderfully together. They ate in the same places. They shared the same toys. They slept yeah. in the same place. So they also got along wonderfully and did not have any issues with not being able to play together and being jealous of each other. Certainly. And that brings up a good point that it really just depends on both dogs in the situation. Um, not that your pet dog had anything wrong. He was just kind of used to his way. And when we introduced something new, it was just a little bit too much. Um, but that does happen, and it's something that we feel is important to talk about. 
Um, but it just really depends on the two dogs in the situation and, and what works best for them. Some graduates do the opposite of what you chose and, and send, choose to send the guide dog back. Um, it's not as common, but it does happen. Um, so it's really just important to remember to communicate with the foundation and with consumer services as these types of things come up, which Holly did great about doing so that her trainer was able to give her guidance as the process happens and we were able to just make sure everybody remained safe. Richard, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, yeah, the, the two dogs do get rambunctious at times. Um, and usually that's the signal for us that they need to get out of the apartment. Um, we're lucky since we don't have a yard or anything, um, we do have a dog run a couple of blocks away. Um, and if I go in somewhat off hours and it's not that busy, we can let both dogs kind of run around and play um, and just have a very good time. And, um, you know, it, we we actually had a dog years ago that was very dog aggressive and sometimes you just it just doesn't work and it like you said it really depends on the dogs um and you know finding ways to hopefully get around that but with that dog she was actually the first dog I ever got on my own and she was a terror with other dogs except for one that we got as a puppy and she just made his life miserable um once again she was a smaller dog he was a bigger dog and she ruled him as my wife would say with an iron paw <laughs> very sweet do either of you have any final comments or anything you'd like to share i don't okay I, you know, the one thing that I would share is the toughest part is letting the two dogs get used to each other. Um, even after that initial introduction, you know, I find that when I put Clyde's harness on to leave, A, Lucy gets very, very upset um, because she wants to go with me, but she'll come down the hallway as I put on the harness for Clyde, she'll go into a sit um, and she expects to get the same treat that Clyde is getting before we leave, leave the house. Um, and, you know, what we, the other thing that we found is they share their toys, um, but sometimes we have to take them away from, from them because, you know, if there's one particular toy that they seem to always be playing tug of war with or, you know, stealing it from each other. We'll take it away for a week and then reintroduce that toy and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And that is something that can happen. And I will say it doesn't always work, but there's a couple toys that we have two of. So sometimes everybody always wants the one the other one has. And luckily, my current guide doesn't seem to care. So you can give her anything and she'd love it. But that mm -hmm. is something you can do if you have a toy that is very, very exciting to both of them is bringing in a second one. It doesn't always work because everybody always wants the one the other one has. Um, but yeah. that is just a little trick on those favorite toys. Well, I thank you both for joining us today. It was really a pleasure and I appreciate your, your sharing your stories and your experiences. And I hope that this can help some of our other applicants and graduates as they move forward. Thank you, Thank Lauren. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this webinar. If you have any questions or concerns, you can reach out to the Consumer Services Office at 631-930-9055. That's 631-930-9055. You can reach us at consumer services at guidedog.org. That is C O N S U M E R S E R V I C E S at guidedog.org. Or for further information, you can check out our website 
www.guidedog.org.